US are going to send cluster bombs to Ukraine. Mm. Now, I know the French, the Germans and indeed the British have concerns about these cluster bombs. What do you think? Well, I think it's the right move, I'm afraid. Um, it's uh, the word cluster bomb or the words cluster bomb do summon up a very, very emotive issue to do with conventional weaponry. Um, part of the reason, and I think Ian Duncan Smith referred to it, is that we haven't been able to provide Ukraine with enough what I would call old-fashioned conventional munitions. Uh, we're not uh, addressing enough in terms of getting the production lines running again. Um, uh, and, of course, the whole cluster munitions technology has, has moved on. But I'm very conscious. But are worried about collateral damage, the, the threat to civilians? We don't want to be killing more innocent people in Ukraine. Well, I think in the areas that we're, where the Ukrainians would use them, there yeah. are very few civilians left. We're talking about the huge defensive uh, minefield belts the Russians have put in, areas, I'm afraid, like Bakhmut, which have been fought over for, for, yes. for, for months. Um, and in some ways, the stalemate means that we're going to continue to have people being killed, including, of course, you know, civilians every day are being yeah. killed by the Russians as part of collateral damage. So it's a yes to cluster bombs. And what's your view on the failure so far for the West to supply this air support? I know we're training um, yeah. fighter pilots, but we're not actually sending air support. Is that yeah. an error? Could we have helped the Ukrainians win this war already? Well... It, 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 one's got to be realistic. This, you know, war is politics by other means. Yes. You know, we're talking about an alliance. We're talking about keeping up, you know, an, a, the NATO strongly together. We don't need to break ranks. The key people in this are the Americans. It's no good trying to beat the Americans up. They've provided 80 percent of the uh, yeah. of the munitions so far. Um, I think they felt they were slightly nudged into the support for F-16s by um, by Britain and Ben Wallace. Um, I think it was the right thing to do. But ultimately, you need to take the Americans with you on this one. Yes. There's no doubt about it, of course, if the Ukrainians had had, had that uh, capability earlier on, it might be a different uh, story on, on the ground. So we but, couldn't uh, take the Americans with us when it came to Ben Wallace being the head of NATO. No, no, I agree. I agree. And uh, do you think that's an error by Biden? Well, I, I, personally, I, personally I absolutely do think it's an error. I think uh, Ben Wallace is, of all the candidates I've seen, is the best qualified. Uh, and I think Britain has been the most, A, stalwart, in making the case for support to Ukraine. It's been one of the most stalwart members of NATO. It's a Security Council, uh, you know, a, mm. a, a permanent Security Council member. It's been a very close, very close ally of the Americans. And I think the way it's been slightly personalised is, uh, is, is unfortunate. I would also say that I think, uh, going back to cluster munitions, it's a pity that the Americans have made the issue of cluster weapons uh, the issue just before we go into a very, very important at NATO summit at yes. Vilnius this week. And von der Leyen, what do you think about her name being in the frame? I mean, I find that ironic, considering that Germany has been criticised for yeah. dragging its feet on providing weaponry, weaponry yeah. to the Ukraine. And also, she didn't have a particularly illustrious history no. of Defence Secretary there. No, well, I wouldn't want to make sort of ad hominem attacks. But as you quite rightly say, one of the reasons the Germans were so uh, recalcitrant in supporting Ukraine was they couldn't support it with anything. Uh, and a lot of that have happened on Ursula von der Leyen's uh, watch when she so was she defence minister. Be NATO, she? Well, I would argue not. Um, I, I see where the French and the Germans might be coming from. They want inverted commas one of theirs at the top. But I, I want nothing that gives any more credence to the idea of this European defence identity yeah. when NATO is absolutely the rock solid basis on which our security rests. Now, that's all of us in, in NATO and most of us in the EU. What's your analysis well, them in the of where... EU. Well, indeed. <laughs> um, what's your analysis of where Russia is now following Prigozhin's yeah. failed coup attempt? I mean, there were some interesting images out of the Kremlin in the week <laughs> featuring him in various disguises, this idea of trying to humiliate him. Is this bloke still alive? What's, <laughs> what, what do we think the thinking is around Putin and his future at the Kremlin? Well, he has. I mean, Prigozhin has really reveal the sort of weakness of Putin's position. Yeah. You know, he is dependent on these, these psychotics, you know, like the people who run Wagner Group. If I was Progression, I'd stay away from you know, balconies on high-rise buildings, uh, and I'd certainly stick to water rather than tea. Yes, um, right. But there has <laughs> been... Avoid any pointy umbrellas. Yeah, but uh, you know, Wagner Group have taken a hell of a kicking because they've been put into the front line by the Russian army, who don't like them. Uh, Putin has now, as a result of Progression's actions, tried to absorb Wagner Group into the military as a sort of element of the mm -hmm. state, not as a private military security company. And it can't be much fun, inverted commas, for the, uh, the Russian soldiers to be looking left and right and seeing, uh, you know, the, the, you, you couldn't be unaware of what's going on back in Moscow or alongside you with Wagner Group, let alone the fact that you've got you know, NATO 
you know, supply in the Ukrainians who are proving to be does very it... redoubtable uh, yes. opponents. Well, let's talk about them. I mean, does it strengthen Ukraine's position? There's obviously talk about them being fast-tracked into NATO. Would you yeah. agree with that? Or do you uh... think that might provoke the Russians even further? Well, I don't think, given that it is all about a defensive alliance... Yes. You know, and it is an attack on one, it's an attack on all. You know, we can have a debate on, on, on that if it was challenged. But the idea of bringing the Ukraine in while it's still in the middle of a shooting war with Russia is, is fanciful. And I hope the Ukrainians, whatever they're offered at Vilnius, and I think it will be very substantial. Yeah, this is the NATO summit next the week. The NATO summit next week, sorry. Yeah. Don't view the fact that they're not going to be fast-tracked as a loss. There will be a very, very strong... Um, rhetoric about commitment. There'll be a huge package. Yes. I know within that is the slightly you know, controversial issue of cluster munitions. But Ukraine should, be, should go away very satisfied. And I hope they sell that up. Yes. Because it would be, be inconceivable that NATO would accept Ukraine in, into NATO at a time when they could then invoke Article 5. Uh, end of defence and call, Mind, call NATO's bluff. Which... Mindful of the fact we've just got a minute left, so Simon, I'm going to ask right. you a big question, but how does this end? Well, at the moment, it ends in sort of stalemate, um, which is why it is so important that the Ukrainians get in a really strong position. I mean, can they reclaim some of this territory? I doubt if they can reclaim it all, unless there's a collapse in, in the Russian front line, mm. if, the, if the army refused to fight, and historically there have been examples of that. I mean, if not, we sense? need to put are, them in... Because I think they Putin... Winning? Are they winning this? Are the Russians losing? It's quite hard to quantify how this might play out. It's very hard to quantify. Month. It's very hard to quantify. Do not underestimate the capacity for the Russians for sacrifice yes. and the depth Russia has still. Uh, it has the capacity to continue this war for a long time. Unless, as I say, the people don't, the people in the front line refuse to fight and die yeah. for what they now view but to be... Do you be, see this no. playing out for years? I, I see it potentially playing out for years. Hence, you know, the, the reluctance to provide cluster weapons at a time when we're providing everything else uh, would send up, would, would, would just absolutely hamper the ability of the Ukrainians to at least get an operational success yes. that could be turned into strategic political advantage. And a final word on our own defences. Obviously, we keep on having this row yep. about defence spending, yep. whether it's enough of GDP. Are we adequately defended? Are we spending enough on defence? Well, I would argue not. Yeah. Uh, and I think we are seeing the results of not spending that amount and thinking that numbers don't count. Because if you act small, you think small. If you think small, you start to be treated small. And we lose diplomatic and political leverage by not really investing in our armed forces, then using them imaginatively in those arena. So, Simon, lovely to speak to you right. this morning. Thank you for joining us.